Hi everybody and a big big thank you out to McCarthy Insurance Group based here in Cork City. We're very very grateful to have him on board as one of our sponsors for the Long Way Back podcast. A big thank you from all the team here at the Long Way Back. Now on to the show. And welcome back to the Long Way Back podcast. I'm your host Timmy Long and tonight myself and Tommy we're going to reminisce in a few things about our childhood and growing up and we're also going to talk a little bit about Tommy addiction um our understanding of recovery yeah and what it really takes to have a strong recovery in your life I think that's very important yeah. and um, there's certain things you have to be doing in your life to have a strong recovery and we'll talk about those things um and we'll just um we'll we'll talk a little bit about maybe prison and and your thinking around prison while you were in there and my thinking around prison when I was in there and we'll just we'll we'll just kinda look at where we both were in our lives at that time and we'll have a chat about it. Yeah, yeah. You know? So um so we'll probably just start about maybe you no know, growing up and this was on my mind today. We grown up we both grew up in the same house, Tommy, yeah? Yeah. And, but we were, were two different characters. Yeah. Completely different characters. You know, I'm much more introverted and you're more extroverted. Extroverted is more, you're, you're oh, good with people like. and very good socially and everybody loves you. Whereas me, I'm more kind of, kind of held back. You know, I live in my head a bit, you know, but in recent years, I've kind of, trying to I've, I've i've understood what kind of character i have and i and i tried to leave myself out a little bit more do you know what i mean yeah so um like growing up for me did like i never really felt like i i belonged to anything do you know because yeah, of i absorbed in my head and because of the different things that were going on at home and in school and out the street I was always kind of caught up in what was going on in my head. And I had beliefs as well that weren't great about myself, you know. Um, I, as you know, like, I had a huge head and a small body as a young child, you yeah. know. Um, and there's a reason, for, a reason for that. We won't get into that today. Um, but there was a lot of stick over. I got a lot of, there was a lot of mocking and stuff on the streets. And then there was a lot of stuff went in at home and you know yourself what, what a lot of that stuff is. But um, when I look at the difference between you and me, you know, in, in our different personalities, even though we grew up in the same household, yeah. it's it's amazing, like, it's, it's so different. Yeah, well, I had a lot of energy, you see. I had a lot of energy as a kid and I always had to be out and doing something. Do you know, I was always, the minute I wake up, I had to be out the door, do you know, I had to be up to something. Do you know, and as you know, and a lot of people know, horses were a big part of my life. Mm. I loved them. I loved them and, uh, do you know, and at the time there was a lot of horses around the area. Yeah. So they're what kept me going. Do you remember waking up and having horses in the garden? I do. Remember the horses, the, see we had no, at, at this stage, there was about four or five entrances into the estate that we lived in. And there was, like back, there was no fences, there was no walls, there was nothing, everything no. was wide open. And that was why there were so many different gangs and and um, and just antisocial behavior within the area. Mm. But, um, I I remember 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 the time we were going through the field in, in the school. You were very small. Do you remember that time? No, no, I don't remember it, to be fair. I I, I remember walking through the field with my mum. I was I was holding onto the buggy and John Paul was in the buggy, our youngest brother. And um there was a mare and fall in the field. I can, what I can remember is that it was my grandest dog. We had him overnight. Yeah. I don't know what dog who that was. was that Sandy, Tommy? No, that was the, but, our own dog. Yeah. No, they uh, had a dog called Sandy as well. I don't know. But he was a sandy colour anyway, yeah. the same dog. And uh, he ran around the fall, as yeah. far as I know. And the mare got excited and ran for me and turned and mm. kicked me straight in the forehead. You actually, you actually left the buggy. 
and you walked over to the mirror. Yeah. Uh, w- with the fall, and you wanted to rub the fall, and she turned and gave you a kick straight into the fucking front of the, f- the face here. Yeah. Right into the forehead. <laughs> and she blew you f- about 10 feet across the field. My yeah. mother. My my mother thought you were dead. We, mm. I didn't know what was going on. And John I was Walsh, only five years of age. John, well. Wal- John Walsh was going through the field. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. Then yeah. He picked me up and he picked you up and brought you. Mm. And we were shifted straight to the hospital. Yeah, and um, and that didn't stop me. I still had no affair from no, none, um, none whatsoever. None whatsoever. I just loved them. I just they were a big part of my life. And I had a few growing up. My own ones, and I used to be breaking horses and. Yeah, you spent a lot of time in the yeah. Like when, well, when we we when we're we're talking, a lot of a lot of the times, a lot of a lot of time spent for us growing up, we would have been jocking horses yeah, there. Yeah. Um. Even over the site, you know, mm. growing up, I would have had a lot of different friends who were travellers. Yeah. You know, and I always wondered why I always felt that I might have fitted in there differently than I did. Mm. You know, because where we 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 grew up in the state, and there was a lot of poverty. You know, and people were just coping. Mm. But then, when you looked inside our house, like it was beyond the coping. Like we, there was mental health issues, poverty. There was no work in there. We lived on hand me downs, Tommy. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember the three of us going into the same bat water as my mother after she washed herself and wa- once a week. And we were probably stinking inside in the school. And I always wondered why I didn't get a girlfriend. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no one wanted to sit me. <laughs> you know, inside in the classroom mm. growing up. But I was a very shy, introverted kid, you know, um, that lived in his head constantly, you know. And then you had you, on the other hand, who everybody loved. And I remember one day we were out to Lee Valley and there was a friend of ours with us. And God rest his soul, he's dead now. And um, he wanted to take you with him. <laughs> we were only kids now. And he wanted to take <laughs> you with want him. me to go? Probably Robin. Robin shop, shops or something mm. for sweets and stuff. When we were kids, that's yeah. all we done. Like, we had nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> and fuck it. Like, and, and I remember him pushing me, telling me to go away. Because all I wanted to do was take, protect you. Mm. And, and, and bring you with me. You know, because like I knew what was going on. You know what I mean? You yeah. know what they were taking you for. And I, all I wanted to do was take you away from them, take you home. But they were saying, no, go away, and they'd give me a kick. And I remember that. And I went after that same fellow years later <laughs> to try to kill him <laughs> over that. When I, cause, because all that stuff, Tommy, all that pain, all that fucking bullying and mm. all that, it all them you, negative like... words towards me, they all, they all pushed me into a corner where the only thing I could do was was fight back. Yeah, you know, and and some may say like the bully, the bullied becomes the bully. Yeah, you know, and 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 maybe so, maybe so because when I did get involved in drugs and stuff and criminality, the only way to survive in that environment is is to become a bully. You know, and and that's not something I'm very proud of today about my own life. Yeah, but, but you were you were never a bully, though. You know, you just defended yourself, defending. Yeah. You know? Because, Tommy, I always knew deep down within me. I always knew I wasn't a bad person. Mm. I knew the things that I was doing were bad. and I, I But I still had to do them. It was like a protective mechanism that I'd have to build, a, yeah. an armour, a suit to protect me. You know, to, to say, like keep away yeah but i know down down below all that wasn't bad you know i was soft yeah yeah do you know a big softy <laughs> you know which is something that um i've tried to kind of be- get closer to in the last few years mm-hmm. you know you kind of yourself do you know what i mean yeah where do you relate with, with with some of the stuff that i just spoke about there how did you feel growing up did you always did, did you did you always feel connected to people and your friends like I felt com- always disconnected. Yeah. Well, you know me, as I said there, well, you go, I was always out there. I was always, you know, I'd get on with anyone. I'd talk to anyone, you know. Um, you know, I could have different friends every other week, you know. I always was, was someone different. 
draw. I thought, because I got on with everyone, and draw, I just, I don't, I, I don't know, draw, I just kept plowing on, and mm. and you wouldn't know who I'd be with, do you get me? Mm. You wouldn't know who I'd be with, or, you know, um, and draw, I used to be with a fella that had a lot of horses, and that's what I used to do. I used to yeah. go with him every day. I used to love it. I used to be breaking horses, and that was my thing. Yeah, you, loved, you loved I, the horses. Like, I go home, can't wait to wake up to get back out the next morning and go on for horses. Yeah. You know? and, and robbing horses was a big part of me. You were known as a good old jockey, how many? I, I wasn't bad. I wasn't yeah, would bad. you classify yourself as a good jockey these days? I wasn't on a horse by in five years. But I try, yeah. I try, you know. Um, last horse I was on, no, we nearly got killed. Yeah. You, you know? went up in the hospital the last, when was the last time you went to visit you? You were on a wheelchair. Uh, yeah, that was about 2010, I think, wasn't it? I, um, I came off a of horse's back about two o'clock in the morning, down Nash's Boreen, um, and he fell and squashed me leg and nearly snapped me ankle. I had to crawl home at two o'clock in the morning. But um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to hospital for three days. I was out drinking, and one of the boys says, uh, "Give me a look at your leg." And I showed him the leg, boy, and he goes, "I'm telling over. You need to go to the hospital." But a week and a half, I was on antibiotics. Did they keep you? Yeah, I kept me in for a week and a half. I nearly lost my leg. It was gone black. Was it was it caught? Yes, it was a big hole in my ankle. And did you get up in the house again after that? No, nah, I don't know. After Ever. It, yeah. yeah, of course I did. <laughs> yeah, well, probably next week. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and then, you know, a week and a half I was with a drip in my hand, antibiotics, yeah. to get away the infection in my leg. Um, yeah. See, 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 do you know, it, that there just reminds me well, it was pure mental, of addiction. Like, pure mental. Do you know, do I, you know addiction is the same thing, Tony, isn't it? It's I, the exact same <laughs> thing, like. I remember being in hospital. I was drinking for three days after that fall, taking no notice, hobbling around the place, and um, going to the hospital. I was about four days in. I asked him, could I go for a, a few hours? And I came back paralytic with a crutch. I could barely walk, and I fully drink. That's how mental addiction yeah. was for me. You know? but, 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 but the other side of it for me is... is with addiction and people always kind of look at like why can't you get it why why like family members they say like what's wrong with them what's wrong yeah. with them why can't they just it's like why do they keep doing it it's it's one of the most fucking unexplained questions that will ever 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 it's like a switch inside your be just goes it's, off and it's, like, it's, it's just it's what it is for me tommy is just It'll happen when it's happened. Mm. It's supposed to happen. Mm. Some people have to go through a lot of pain in order for them to hit that place of called rock bottom. Yeah. It's like you and the horses, like, you mm. know, every single time you got a kick as a child. If that I didn't got a lot stop of kicks, you. A lot of kicks yeah. growing up. You got a kick then, you, got, you like you nearly lost your leg. I got a kick one day off a of genus, right? <laughs> I was had a small child up on top of the genus, it was a tiny thing. I was up behind her and I had the child up and I was walking with the next to Ginny Buck and hit me a kick straight into the box. I mean, I mean no. I went down on my two knees onto the floor like this, right? And I was, oh! <laughs> Ginny started taking off a door up the field and there was the woman who was the child behind me screaming and roaring, Where's me child? <laughs> it was fucking mad. Mad times, yeah. but mad times. Yeah. But they were, but we did love horses. I, yeah, I um, yeah. there was always a bit of competition with the horses up around us. See mm. who was the best jockey. But you always kind of came out and top, didn't you, Tom? Always. always like. <laughs> there wouldn't be men, you know, would hold my coat back then. Yeah. Uh, one friend of ours is dead now, got rest his soul. He was a great jockey. Yeah, I know the fellow you're on about. Do you know? Um, another one or two. Another one or two. Yeah. We're all well able to handle horses, you know? Yeah. But, um, I used to love breaking them then as well. So the thriller, and I'd be moly on them. I'd be moly drunk breaking in horses. And lucky I'm not dead. I know. You know? And mm. lucky I'm not dead. But, uh, what else growing up, Tommy? What else was important for you growing up? 
like the sport was never your thing, was no, it? No, I never into sport, never into football, mm. soccer, or nothing. I yeah. played a bit of hurling years ago, um, and I liked hurling. You know, I'm right-handed, I'm right-legged. You know, everything is right. But it, when I when I play hurling, I swing to the left because mm. a good friend of mine that, that was in my class taught me how to play hurling, and he was left-handed hurler. Do you think you learned over that? Over then? that, yeah. Over him. Mm. It's mad, it's isn't it? It is, boy, yeah. yeah. So I could throw a stone or right and everything's right. I'd kick a ball with my right leg and I swing to the left then. Yeah. yeah. It's mad. <laughs> and that was the only thing, sport I ever played. Other than that, I had no interest in it. Gonna go into your school stuff as small, but yeah. School, yeah, 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 definitely. Okay. Right, Tommy. So school was... What way was school for you? School, 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 very tough to me. Very tough for me. Um, you know, I said, in, like, I'm dyslexia. And, um, you know, the pressure I had in school was, was yeah. off the wall. Like, you know, I, I hated it. You went to the, the, the I went to pr primary school as well, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to Nottingham Primary. I went into, I went into, um, Nakanahini secondary, and I was a month there, and I, I couldn't keep up, so I went to a different school then after that. But even in primary, like, you know. But how did that, do you know, that new school? And I, I remember, I remember, um, I remember you were moved into a different school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, kids can be fucking tough, you know, because I didn't know what kind of school it was, but I know it was, nowadays, I know it was just for kids with learning yeah. difficulties. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But back then, like, you would be known as the slow, we called stupid or Yeah, tick. yeah. Do you know what? I didn't take much heed of it back. You didn't, you didn't you know, I, I, I wouldn't, that stuff wouldn't, I'd just brush it off, do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, it was what it was. And to be fair, I wasn't there much. It was a very good school. Do you know, oh, my eyes to have an awful lot. Do you know the way you be the class clown and the yeah. this and the that and messy and this and that? It really, really kind of set me back in myself and like, whoa. There were some people there you know, with, with bad difficulty learning and you know, looking at them and you, know, you felt like a bit of gratitude yeah, for it, Yeah, Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, you know, like, as a kid, you'd be laughing at people with a Down syndrome or anything like that, because you, know, you know no different. But, you know, when you would go to the school like that, it opened your eyes. And I always said it, I always said it to my son growing up, don't ever laugh or mock them people, because mm. they're special people, you know. Yeah, and it's... Always. That's one thing, you know. It, it opened my eyes to the last that school. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. And, um... And and that's a great way to teach a child as well. And you, do you understand why, why, why you said that to him? Because Tommy, because I didn't know growing up but that you, it was. But you also wrong. know what it, what it is to feel like. Feel it, yeah. You know yeah, that's yeah. why you said to him because you don't want anybody else to feel the way you felt mm. because of your own treatment from other people yeah. and how it made you feel. And I can relate to that too, a hundred million percent. Mm. And that's, I do the same things to my own kids. Mm. I obviously <clears> had to Georgia. Well, Georgia, Georgia's like, just... Do you know what was another thing there, what, why I, I felt okay? Because a few people that I know went there as well. Mm. Do you know? One or two from my school ended up down there, and I was like, this isn't half bad. The yeah. boys are here as well. Like, mm. I'm not the only one. I'm not that bad. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So I was like... Fair enough, and and I settled in, you know, and it was a, f a long journey every day. Then, you know, um, I got a bit of lead way and I went on the hop then for months. I was <laughs> gone for months. I remember I'd be gone, and what I used to do, I used to go away with the horses all day long. What no age were you then? You were fucking 12, Tommy. 12, I'd say, uh, yeah. My mother was in hospital that time. Yeah, that's she, right. She was. Um, I was in France, she, was I? Yeah, or was it was he somewhere you else? You could have been in France at the time. My mother won well. Um, I was in France. And I was months away beyond. I think I might have been in 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 a different place down. Ahi Hall. Yeah, Ahi Hall. Yeah. yeah, I could have been down there. 
I remember going down there. I used to love going remember down there for the food. Down, <laughs> the remember food on the Sundays was yeah. on right. Remember my nan, Mary, Mary Long came down. Mm. Remember her? Remember she was sick? Bad. I didn't even fucking know she was sick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was a... Uh, she was a legend, but She was a tough fucking bit of stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. I was only telling you for a story. I lived with her for a while. Because me and my mother weren't getting on. I was hard. I was hard mm. work on me, too. I was mm. a young fellow. I was fucking rebelling against everything. And she says, send them fucking down to me. <laughs> <laughs> Not so bad, the woman. Oh, very known. She had this little yorkie of a thing. I swear to God, the thing was reeking, <laughs> reeking out. Of, what's the right word? Re... What's the word? Recarnated. Recarnated. I swear to God, the devil's dog, Tommy, this thing was. <laughs> yeah, the legs the thing had teeth that way. <laughs> and the dog, I'd be inside and I used to tease the dog now because the fucking thing would let me near the porch of the house and I'd, I'd come in and, and I'd be at the porch and we'd like there the teeth out and I'd, say, and I'd be teasing the dog. I was really young for that. <laughs> and she'd come in she'd say, Stop fucking teasing the dog, you! <laughs> and she'd give the dog a kick. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> Well, she was tough, boy. She used to make this old fucking brown soda bread as well. And she used to put the old locked butter up top of it. I used to love it. Come home from work every day. Because I was, I was working at a young age. I was working from 15 on in the sites. And uh, I'd come home and she'd give me a bit of fucking food. And I'd go into the front room then. And I'd sit down on the couch. And the, the dog, her little yorkie, would jump up in the fucking chair across the way. And he'd be looking at me like that. <laughs> a vicious little fucking dog, <laughs> Tommy, right? But, um, did you? Today? Oh, God, honey. But, um, but then I'd get paid on a Friday and I'd go out. <laughs> I'd just go missing from Friday. I was probably fucking 14 or 15 at the time. I go missing from Friday and I come back Sunday night or else Monday morning and go to work. And she just, she knew the story, like, she knew the story. She just go up to bed and I fucking make you something to eat. And I go up, and, you know, I get up the next morning. But um, I didn't know she was getting sick at that stage. Mm. And uh, I remember then leaving that hill and going to France, Tommy. And when I was in France, about France, about eight or nine months, um, my mum rang me and told me that she was after fucking dying and that she didn't want me to come home. Her, her, one of her wishes was that I didn't come home from mm. the treatment centre in France. So I stayed, but I was fucking devastated. Mm. Right? Because I felt like she understood me. Do you know? She understood my madness, like. Do you know what I mean? And I, I wasn't fucking. I not many people could understand my madness back then. <laughs> you know, so it was, it was, it was, um, it was, it was a really tough, tough time for me because I was over there on my own. I was only a child. Yeah. And then for that to happen, and uh, like I got all excited thinking that I could come home, but if I came home, like I would have been fucking destroyed again. I was only fucking sixteen, seventeen at this stage. I don't even know. But when I went to when I went to start going into homes, Tommy, I was about fifteen. Mm. Do you know? And uh, I think I I was eighteen by the time I stopped coming out from from homes and treatment centres. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you were eighteen when you came back from France yeah. that time. Yeah. yeah um, I remember being in Ahiol. I think it was ninety seven, and um, and I went straight up to, to France. Then after that, but it was mad. But what I want to get back to with you is with the school, Tommy. Like, you never really, you never were able to read or write through your whole life. No. How no. did you come up with it? Um, I don't know. It was tough. It was tough, do you know what I mean? And and now I have to do in school, I have to copy. Yeah. Do you know? You could write stuff on the board all day and I'd write it down. I have good writing, like, yeah. but I couldn't spell that. And, uh, you even understand no. it? No. I always no. struggle to still mm. even understand. If I'm re reading something, which is I rarely do, but if I'm looking at something and if I get caught in one word and I don't understand it, I have to stop. Yeah, it'll throw you right it off everything, yeah. Completely, and then gone then from that. But um, you and know, sometimes now when I be reading, I'd read, I'd, I'd, I'd get caught in the word, but I go on further, yeah. and then I'd realise what the words about because the way the rest of the sentence went, you know. But other times then I couldn't, and I'd be just trying to figure it out as I'm going along, you know. Um, 
Yeah, and school was tough over it. It's very tough. I always want, didn't want to be there, you know. Yeah. I never wanted to be there. I always felt like the pressure about that was on me in school. It was something else. Just wet me wrong, not me when I know. Like I said it last day there, like, I'd be in school and I'd be thinking about the fucking spelling test on Friday and it's only Monday morning. Like, mm. That's how scary it was to me now, to be fair. And, you know? and, and like, you know, a lot of the stuff that we'll be covering on this podcast too is around the neurodiverse side of learning differences, ADHD, autism mm. and stuff like that. And what you're talking about there is is a massive area that's, I don't think is getting enough attention in this country still in education. Mm. And that's where you slip through the cracks in the education system. Yeah. Now, back then, Tommy, listen, they, we didn't have much knowledge. We're talking about the late 90s. There wasn't enough known about all this stuff, the neurodiverse stuff, mm. about dyslexia and all the other stuff. There yeah. wasn't enough. And there's, that's so, okay. But today, right. today, we do. We mm. do know more about it. Yeah, but see, when I back then as well, the the oh he's bold, he's a brat, he's this and that. I want, uh, no, looking back on it, and I know what way it was. I wasn't. I just couldn't handle what was going on in front of me on the desk, and I couldn't couldn't do the work. So I was acting up on it, drunk, and to take me away to what was in front of me on the table. I'd act up. And what kind of behaviours then would, would come from, stem from Messing that? Messing and stupidness and getting sent to the principal's office and draw all that stupidness. Miss, can I go to the toilet? All the stuff, I, just all to get you that, that Just to get me away from it. Yeah, I can relate to that. Do you know, um, so that it was tough, but it was really tough because I always felt like there was pressure on me. And and tell me this, Tommy, right? Tell me this, and this is, this is a, a big thing for me. Mm. You know, if 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 your education ro- route was set up in a different way, and it was set up in a way where you enjoyed school, mm-hmm. and when I say enjoyed school, you were being taught about maths and English in a different way, but at a level that you were able to cope with, bringing the yeah. speed down a bit, yeah, yeah, and explaining yeah, yeah. words and their yeah. meaning a little bit. No, uh, I know that. Like the education system is not set for that because mm-hmm. it's a really slow environment. Yeah. But some people learn like that, Tommy. Some yeah. people learn really slowly. And like if somebody is spelling something out to me, and I said it the other night, Tony, when we were on the other podcast, and I, if somebody is spelling something out to me, you have to literally say A. Yeah. And yeah. then I write yeah. a B. And I understand. And if you're giving me directions, mm. Tommy, if you're telling me go down straight down and go left and then take a right and you're left again, I'd say. Thanks. Yeah, and that's the next and person. And I drive down straight and I'll ask someone then at the yeah. next left. Yeah, like going the same. If someone, like even our brother there yesterday, I asked him to spell something and he spelt it. Bu- 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 I says, whoa, relax now, boy. I can't. I can't. I can't go that fast. Yeah, I'm like, the same. I didn't even hear what you said. You have to. I Sometimes I have to ask people three times what you said. Because I forget, I forget like that. Mm. Do you know? I was saying, slow down, say it again. And then they'd fly on again. I'd have to stop them and say, well, hang on, there now. I have A, B, C here. Do you know? So it takes me a long time to register it as well. Yeah. Mm. Like you said something there as well about school. Like when they're teaching in school, when back then, I don't know about now, it was like a hundred miles an hour. Oh, it was going too fast for me, and I, I, I am on question, and they're on ten, out, and that's where all the anxiety and everything came in. Then, but I was, and it's up like you head. freeze, it's yeah. like you freeze, yeah. like there's yeah. no, and and it's like your head's ready to bust, and you're just like, oh, do you know what I mean? Mm. Slow down, like, slow and you're way caught up with that. In the end, Tommy was just going on the hop, just not even going to yeah, school. Yeah, taking myself out out of the situation, do you know? And mm. I done that, I done that for months, man. Months mm. upon end, but um, yeah, do you know it was, it was mental, but it was yeah. mental. I felt like there was pressure, by the pressure, 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 every day. So um, you know, and as you're on about it, no, I remember years and years later going to school in prison. 
Yeah. You know, when I did go to school in prison, I done VTEC, VTEC level two. You know, and I, I got the sorting hall for it. And, but we done it slow and steady. Mm. You know, because no one rushing because me. them teachers, Tommy, are taught how to teach mm. to, to meet your yeah. level. Yeah, so what she done with me, she goes, right. I told her, I says, I'm dyslexic, I can't read or write. She goes, right, that's fine, there's no bother. She got a sheet. She goes, try that there for me. And I done it, and she knew exactly where I was at. And she goes, right. She goes, you're well able for level three after you finished it. But mm. I, I started with the level three in educating mm. prison. So the the level two is 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 the basic junior sort. Yeah. And level three is junior sort. No fuck it. If if you ask me, it was really basic, all of it. Yeah. You know, because it was it was tough, Tommy. It was really tough trying to understand what was going on, you know, but learning and then having these beliefs that you're not able, you're not good enough, what are you fucking doing? You're yeah. not able for this stuff, and that was how my head was. And then I'd have this kind, I'd freeze. Yeah. I'd have a meltdown. Yeah. I remember, I remember after a few years, one of the teachers was after I was after doing the FETAC three and uh, the FETAC four, and one of the teachers asked me to do a junior sort or the leaving sort, and I thought, I thought, oh, all right. So I tried it, Tommy. Um, I got so stressed. From yeah. trying to do the, this was one subject now in the leaving sort. It was history. She said, "Like, have you an interest in history?" I said, "Yeah." So it was history, and I put everything I had into it, and I got so stressed I wouldn't go to the school anymore mm. yeah. because I I I I didn't want to leave the teachers down, but I was also getting really upset. And one day I went up there and I had a chat to the teacher. She was lovely. And I told her exactly how I was feeling. She says, Timmy, there's no pressure on you. It doesn't matter if you fail or you pass. She says, just try it. Don't put no pressure on yourself. And I did. I went in there and I tried it. And I'd done the, the history in the Leaving Sort Foundation mm. section. And um, I think I passed it. Do you know, I was fucking okay. so proud of myself. I remember Nicole coming up and visiting me. The weekend and uh, the weekend I got my results. I was showing her the and the fucking smile on my face with the just complete pride. It was um, unbelievable, do you know, because I'd never done anything like yeah, that in yeah. school time. No junior sort. I went to when I got thrown out of school. I went to Foss. Mm. I went to Utrecht, do you know, um, and I think I done. I done basic foundation English and maths, and they were the two subjects that I need you needed back then to get a trade. I don't even I can't even remember sitting in exams or something. Do you know? I think or one of them was woodwork. I had to make something to pass the junior sort as well. And I was always good with my hands. Mm. Do you know? But <clears throat> do you know? Growing up in our area too, Tommy. Do you know, like we, we fit in very easily with everybody oh, in the yeah. area because we never felt awkward. Do you know no. why? Because everybody Everyone else was, was in the same spot. Yeah. Everyone was you know, the same. Yeah. Anybody that was kind of doing well, like <laughs> they got slagged to death because they, they were different. They, they didn't both. hang around with us anyway. No. <laughs> no, but they were also slagged. Yeah, like because of there were so many kids in the school that were lacking that intellectual kind of ability. The few that were able got fair stick over it. And yeah. I feel sorry for them kids as well because it wasn't their fault, do you know what I mean? That yeah. they were actually able to to learn. But we broke their hearts, you know, because they were fucking spots and, and, <laughs> and but it was never intentional. Yeah. It was just yeah. it was just the way things were. And like even do you know when I left school then and you know, and just hanging around the fucking place and then getting into more and more trouble and it was um it, it was just it just kind of it just gets worse when you're hanging around the place, Tommy, because the boredom kicks in yeah. and you need to be able to do something because I was fucking full of energy too. Mm. Like, like I I was age. never kind of hanging around the place as a young fella. I started hanging around when I started drinking. When I started yeah. drinking and 
smoke and hash and all that. That's when the hanging around came in for me. But that was kind of drunk. What was it like? What was your first? What was it like? First drinking, drugging. First thing I took was aerosol cans. Aerosol cans was my first thing. Then I went from that to gas bottles. I remember being kicked off a gas bottle down the friend's back. Two of us. It was scary. By but... you? By his man, God rest his <laughs> soul. Oh, man. But that was one scare. How we After the big gas bottles? Yeah, the big gas bottles. We were strung out in them. They used to open the back door and kick us off them. We wouldn't even know the door was opened. It was crazy. But... That much of a buzz yeah. after? Yeah. They, used... they got so sick of us, they used to be planking them. And... Uh, we were round the back there, the big back. We checking everyone. Next minute he says, I found them. So we're in the back of the car. Let me in. The back of the car. Into the back the of the, yeah, into the back of the car. I went in first down there. Stuck to the gas bottle. He pulled me out, right? So I, let me in, let me in, let me in. I'm standing down here, right? Oh, to me head. Next minute I grabbed him. Come on, come on, my shot. When he when I pulled him, he fell out on the floor. He did. <laughs> I took off running, but I got down. Like, but in his yard, there was all gravel, right? And I was standing on the gravel, and I thought there were all eyeballs. But I was running up the back, run, help! <laughs> and you know, oh, stop me! I never, oh, scary, but I had to stop it because I we were on it. Yeah, we were about thirteen, I'd say. We were only young. And then, you know, oh, it was horrific. That's fucking mad. Yeah. I used to think I'd be swallowing my tongue and everything on that. How long were you doing that for? Months. Months. <laughs> I had to I had to stop. I had yeah. that. What did it, that kill us? I was like that with the small gas bottles mm-hmm. and the aerosol cans. We, just, the we were doing, petrol, that's what we started petrol on. Petrol was a big one for me. That's what we started on. <laughs> I nearly drank, remember the night I nearly drank a bottle of petrol, I mean. I, I know fellas that, that, that did drink petrol. Yeah. Oh, so old of it just... Yeah. I was there, I won't say his name, we were there one and there, right? And and you back then there was a lot of gas bottles in the houses and... And we were pure messers now as well, you know, anting for the laugh. So one of the boys were all buzzing gas out of our heads. Next minute I was buzzing it and light, the light on, I was going, you know, with the flame. And one of the boys, how are you doing that? I said, suck in the gas. And when you do, blow it out and light it. Right. So next minute, he just opened his mouth and lit the light off. <laughs> Eyebrows fringed. <laughs> it was since the death. <laughs> oh, you want to hear the roars out of him? Oh, oh gosh. I could right. probably think who that for this, all right. Oh, he's there's... dead now, God rest his yeah. son. Oh, what a bang. He nearly killed me. A lot of fellas <laughs> died too, Tommy. Yeah, right? A lot yeah, of good yeah, jumps for his boy. Yeah, but definitely. Definitely. Do you know, and you always look back and, and um, you'd, you'd wonder. Why and how kind of some of us didn't, some didn't. I, I, I suppose I, we're just blessed, Tommy. I, I, I'm blessed to be sitting here. I know you I'm are. Blessed. I'm blessed, like, a few times. I don't know how I'm here. Between Could you ever, crashes. You ever, that's what I was going to say. Do you ever look back in your life and just look at a few, just a few incidents, like, where you're saying, like, you got, you, you walk up the next morning and you're saying, like, how the fuck am I still alive? Like? Yeah. Like when yeah. I look back in my life, there's a lot of times that my life could have easily been ended. Yeah. Because of 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 you say crashes, mm. falls, um, fights. Yeah. You know, overdoses, drug overdoses, mm. intentional drug overdoses. Yeah. Just go up, not even fucking waking up. Yeah. You know, Definitely. and other ones then waking up in fields after passing out in the cold and waking up, and just wondering just how locked, you're yeah. even there. Yeah. Oh, and um, like I, like waking up and you're like, who am I after him? And am I, uh, mm. what am I after doing? Do you know, just completely blank. And yeah, <coughs> completely related to that too. But you know, do you know the way the man you are today, Tommy. Mm. Do you know when you look back at some of the stuff that we did do? Yeah. Some of the harm we did cause. Yeah. How how different or difficult is it? how difficult is it for you to, to look at that stuff? Um, right, that's a good question. Do you know, 
Um, sometimes, like, what I always say to myself, because sometimes I can get on top of you and this and that, but what I do say to myself, I was on drinking drugs when I'd done all them bad things. You know, I was never sober. I, n I wouldn't harm a fly, but sober. You know, I don't wake up in the morning, I'm going to harm this person, I'm going to do this to this, I'm going to rob this person, I'm going to... I don't wake up in when I'm without a drink or a drug with me. I don't wake up looking to harm anyone or rob anyone or scam anyone. I don't. But put a drink in or a drug into my system and I turn into a complete different person, you know? Um, so, like, as I done the st uh, steps in recovery as well, you know, the 12 steps and uh, my four and five, you know, they're, they're difficult steps to do, you know, because, um, so when I was doing them, I had to, you know, I was getting fucked up around it and a lot was coming up for me and it's about who I hurt and who hurt me, you know, and, um, I just had to keep telling myself I was under influence. I'm not a bad person, you know. I did. I don't intend to go out and hurt anyone, you know. It was. A, I was. I was sick at the time. I was sick, you know. Do you know how I look at it? Do you know? <clears throat> do you know what I see? I see all those things, the drinking, the drugs, mm. but I also see a lack of awareness, Tommy. Right. Exactly, you know, when you're yeah. using, somebody's yeah. using alcohol and drugs or any form of addiction, and that addiction has complete control of that person in relation to how they think and what they're willing to do to yeah. be able to get whatever funding they need to be able to keep going, mm. you know, and, and all they're really doing is soothing themselves. And, and and blocking out some trauma or some emotion that they're not able to feel. And that's yeah. how I look at it, right? But when I look at my life today, okay, when I look at the person I am today, right, I'm like you, I wouldn't harm a fly, mm. okay? We live in a world where where people hurt each other every fucking yeah. day. Yeah. And we live in a world where there's drama in families, there's drama in relationships between friends, there's drama at work, there's drama everywhere, mm -hmm. okay? But what's important is, Tommy, is kind of just to stay out in your own fucking path. Stay in your own path and just stay away from it. Yeah. And just to also understand that it's okay because there is going to be drama and there are going to be people not happy with you for some reason or the other. And that's okay too. Yeah. Right? Okay? But you need to keep doing your own thing. Oh, yeah. I am I'm not innocent from fucking getting involved in drama in my life because I have a short fuse and my temper gets fused very easily. And that's the real truth of it. Yeah. But because I have awareness of my life, I can catch it early and actually look at the reaction that I want to have. Yeah. Even though I might be really upset by somebody who may have hurt me or done something to me or said something about me that's not true, okay? Mm -hmm. It's very important. The next step is the most important step in my life, okay? Yeah. And if I react in the wrong way, I'm the one that will come out... The worst time. In the end. Yeah. Okay, because of my reaction mm -hmm. to it. But if I keep my fucking mouth closed... And just leave them off and don't feed whatever negativity has been sent my way. Mm. Just let it go. Yeah. But sometimes it's important to talk to somebody as well, Tommy, about oh, yeah, this. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Talk to the someone, right person. Someone that you trust. Not somebody who's someone gonna fuck. You trust, not um, somebody who's gonna feed it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Not somebody who's gonna feed the whole lot. Mm. But it's also important to talk about it. Yeah. You know, and um Talk to someone that you trust and you and, know and that you won't hear it again. Do you know what I mean? But like, it, it, it's, it's life. It's mm. life. It's like for, for for somebody in recovery, and this is a big deal for me, Tommy, mm. right? For somebody that, like, I dealt, I was involved in criminality most of my life, Tommy. And drugs, robbing every fucking farm of stuff. And the stuff I'm not fucking proud of, okay? But also, listen, it was stuff I had no choice to do. It was stuff I was molded into, okay? But I also started to understand in early recovery, Tommy, that if I want to get well in life, 
I have to leave those behaviours behind me. Yeah. I have to leave the drugs behind me. I have to leave the robbing, trying to catch people out. I had to leave all that stuff behind me. I had to know, understand that I had to be an honest man. Because in recovery, Tommy, and after doing steps and working with therapists and stuff like that, if you're not doing the right things in life, you're going to feel this unease within you. It's going to be consistently there. Recovery is a fucking journey. It's yeah. recovering from your past behaviours, not just behaviours, but your alcoholism, drug addiction, trauma. It's everything. It's not That's just great, drinking yeah. drugs, it's recovering and it's yeah. changing those behaviours. And the reason you change those behaviours is because you will grow beyond a level that you could never imagine possible. Yeah, yeah. And I see it in you. Mm -hmm. I see you're nearly six years in recovery. Yeah. And the reason I asked you to join me doing this is because I want people to get to know who you are. Yeah. Like everybody that's close to you, how they know you. And I know you're anxious and a bit nervous at the moment doing this because it's new to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But when you come out of your shell and leave people get to know you properly. <laughs> They'll be saying he want to shut up. <laughs> they won't say that. They I'm won't. Joking. But like, they, they won't say that. It's just, it's, it's just, I, I just want us to share, share this fucking message as well mm. that we have. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you ran about there a while ago, I don't know about what we and the wrong that we done and this and that years ago. And like sitting here now telling our story, you know, we're passing the message and you know, trying to right our wrongs, you know. Uh, if I'm saying that right, you are, you are, Tommy. Uh, you are like, uh, like, for people out there that's in the situation that I was in, you know, with drinking drugs and crime and guards and jails and all that, like passing the message here tonight, um, for for them to say, look at Tommy, if Tommy can do it, I'm going to do it, you know, yeah. and um, so here I am now with you. Giving back, you know, mm. giving back. I know what I done back then was wrong. No, I didn't see the wrong in it when I was out there using, you know, I didn't see that. But no, sober and a bit of clean time behind me, you know, and, yeah. and a bit of work done on myself. I I know, no, do you get me? I know, no, the right from wrong, like. Yeah. And how does it feel today, like, to know right from wrong? It feels good. It yeah. feels great. But you know what I also understand as well about life, Tommy? Do you know if you're out there doing the right things in life and you're not hurting anybody? Yeah. You'll start feeling good in yourself. Yeah, definitely. You will feel a real sense of fulfilment within you, like. Mm. And I actually didn't understand that until I started to feel worthy myself. That I, I started to notice that I was actually a good person. Mm. You know, if he, I didn't love myself, Tommy. I hated myself. I hated everything about myself. I felt like I was worthless. I was bad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that was never who I was. And my actions then and addiction, the violence, the robbing, the drugs, you know, all that reaffirmed the way I felt because of my belief systems. But I always, always knew that there was something deeper down. There was good there, but it was buried because of years of trauma, years of addiction yeah. and years of regret and guilt and shame of, of, of the things I've done to hurt people. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. There was a lot of that there. But because in time, recovery, right, is a, is, it's, it's, it's a length of time, it's a journey. And what happens is you grow in that journey. It doesn't happen overnight. No, no. And when, when I say grow, you grow in here. Yeah. You start feeling better about yourself. And when you start feeling better about yourself, you can sit with yourself. I couldn't sit with myself in my head before. It's the same. Exactly the same. It's only, it's only in the last 12 months I can sit with myself, because I don't work on myself. I wasn't working on myself and I was kept running and running and running. I'm, I, my life is busy, 
draw. My life is very busy, but within the last 12 months, I never have to sit down and watch a film, which I couldn't do, do you know? What about social events today, Tommy? Do you know, drinking drugs uh, around yeah. social events, the pubs, parties, 21st, no, 40th. I can, I can do And em. in your case, 50th. I can, I can do <laughs> <laughs> I can do them, yeah. do you know? But, but to what length, Tommy? Till the length when it's getting too much then for me. How I, you know? I, I know, because the talk changes, the, yeah. the, 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 you know? Like, and what would you... I always say people are good for five points, and after five points, get out. Do you know, some of early recovery now, Tommy, what would you... What like, would I tell them about what events? What would you tell them about events? Avoid them, if they yeah. can. Yeah. Avoid them. Do you know, you know when you're strong. You know when you're strong. Do you know, um, and you are when you're strong. What he means by, and this is what I think you mean. Yeah, when you're strong, you won't have to ask or tell anybody that, that you're, you're going. going. Yeah. You will just, yeah, you will just disappear you know. out of the room without even saying yeah. goodbye. Yeah, you won't because everybody's having the time of their lives. Well. <laughs> yeah. So they, they think they are. Like I was in early recovery and I went to the wedding. Yeah. It was a month clean. Yeah. It was the toughest thing I'd done in six years in recovery. Because yeah. yeah. everyone I knew was at the wedding doing their thing. And and it was like, whoa. And you know, it was, that was one of the toughest things I went through in my recovery. And uh, you know, I learned from it. Because I didn't put myself back in the situation for a very, very long time, mm. do you know. And I knew then I had I knew when I was ready because I I didn't um I didn't just jump straight into going to the nightclub or something like that. I used to go out for food. Into the pub, do you know. Uh, I used to go out to Soho and there used to be a DJ there and we'd have grub a few of us, do you know. And, and, and what was key for me, I always went with the right people, you know. I didn't go out with ten fellas that were drinking. I went out with five fellas that weren't drinking, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there could be five fellas drinking. So there was a mix there, you know. But you have to be ready for that stuff. Oh, you have to be ready. I have a you, question for you, Tommy. How are you with accepting compliments from people? Can't. Okay, I so can't. I have a compliment here for you, right? And it's from one somebody that... Tony put out questions there over the week, just in relation to me and you sitting down having a conversation. And somebody texted in and said, Tommy's podcast inspired me to change my career at 37 and apply for UCC. Unreal. You know? That's powerful stuff. Like, how do you accept that now? Like, how do you feel? Is are, you, it, is, are you just saying, like, because I know how difficult it can be to accept the. A compliment. I actually read that that Is comment that, today. I was in work and I was like, I felt gratitude out of it. I was like, whoa, that's beautiful. And I went into one of the lads and I goes, look at that lad. And I read it over for him, man. Draw. I have a better one for you. Okay. Brilliant. Tommy mentioned to keep to keep recovery, you have to give it away. Okay? Yeah. Tommy is a wonderful giver of hope, kindness, and patience. A wonderful heart inside a kind soul. An inspiration to many, the success of this podcast will be created, will be credited to you both. Unreal. It's beautiful. So how, do you, how does that make you feel? It feels good. No. Yeah. You're reading it to me. But if someone was face to face with me saying that, I'd be, Ugh. <laughs> do you know? Do you get me? Yeah. I'd be, I'd be all over the place, you know. And I, I find it very hard to say a compliment, you know. I really do. Um, yeah. <laughs> can be yeah, tough. I can see how uncomfortable it can be. Fire, yeah. but in time, in time, in time, yeah. Accepting compliments. Yeah. Is I just... remember, I remember, you know, in recovery. And someone telling me, I think it was in treatment, someone telling me, look in the mirror and tell, tell myself I love myself. Oh, my God. It was one of the toughest things I've ever done in my life. And that's something similar to that. Mm. That's accepting a compliment. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I probably still find it hard today. 
don't get me wrong, I'll be in the mirror getting myself all dolled up. So I don't be saying, I love you. <laughs> you know, it's just, whoa, relax, step back. <laughs> Do you know, and, and I, I can I, relate I to that. I don't know what it is, it's just... Yeah. I can it's, relate to it, and I'm going to show you something here, right? And it's on my phone. I showed you, Tony, didn't I? I'm not sure. My screensaver. My screensaver was a picture of myself smiling into the camera. And it's not something to show that I'm mad about myself or in love about I myself. I actually, that's on your profile yeah. as well, isn't it? It's, yeah. I thought you were just messing. <laughs> it is, it is though, but it's my screensaver because the more I look at it, and I, 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 the, when I look at it, it's a funny kind of look. Mine's yeah. The yeah, I have it here. Would you believe my own screensaver is myself as well? But I'm holding up two salmon. <laughs> I, <laughs> I was I was out walking one evening and I see a fellow with two salmon and I said, can I pick them up there? And he says, go on. And I took a picture. There's my screen so see over there, Tony. Can you see that? Yeah. Hold it up towards that camera there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. See it? <laughs> and the reason it's, it's like that is because... For a long, long time, Tommy, I couldn't look into me in, in no mirror. I get what you mean, no, I by could that. never look at in Cause no it, mirror. Because it is a silly face you're making, isn't but it? But you see, when I look at that now, I just feel happy. By but, you know, if I looked at that and it was me doing yeah. that, I'd be cringing. I, I, and I completely un I understand what you you're know, saying. I'd be like, Ugh. I completely understand what you're saying, but, like, I felt, I felt it was... And it's, and listen, I'm, I'm not talking about this stuff now. Fucking yeah, yeah. Weak for myself because you know. I guess I, I get you. What, I get it's what just, you mean. hundred percent. It's a healing. Yeah. It's part of yeah. the process of healing for I'd me. I'll be at home now and win if you are. And do and put it as your screen to ever because what it is, Tommy, is is you're looking at yourself and you're saying, "Do you want fair fucking play at them?" I feel I'd be hiding it on people and everything if that was me. Do you know that? It's, it, it's a boat. Like, it's a boat. Can't live anyone it's, see it's, that. It's actually a boat. Tapping yourself on the back mm. and saying, Do you know what? Fair play. Do you know what? You got through it. Yeah. You know, you're still on your journey, but you got through that. And I'm proud of you. Yeah. And I'm proud of you. We don't do that to ourselves. Like, we fucking, one sec, one sec. Mm. We credit everybody else. And we, and we say, Well fucking done. We never sit still and look at the things we've done in our own lives. For the first time in my life, I looked at what I've accomplished in the last few years since I got sober. And I sat there and I looked at everything that was going against me before with my mental health and the mm. addiction. And I looked at the things that I've accomplished. And I don't mean financial things, I mean intrinsic things. My own well being, how I can sit with myself, how I don't hate myself anymore, how I don't beat myself up anymore mm. for things. You know, I'm on about that stuff. And that's worth its weight in gold. I mean, in the most precious material on the planet, it's worth yeah. more than that. And the most important thing to me in my life today is my well being, bar none. Because if my well being is not good, I know good to my wife and my kids. No good to you or Tony. I no good to anybody that's listening to this. You yeah. Know? But if I'm looking after my well being, I can give everybody else something as well. I can go to work. I can provide for my family. You know, I can go home. I can love my wife. I can love my kids. You can be spend time with them and the dog. You know, it's about my me. It's about you, you, your, everything in your life is about you. Mm. And when you become to a place that you love you and you're happy with you, you'll be able to give everybody around you what they need to help them with them and for them to make, to be happy with themselves. And it's about showing them. It's about showing them how to love themselves as well. Mm. And that's one of the biggest things on this planet that that there's so much confusion and, and lack of understanding around. We go through life trying to make ourselves feel happier and better with material stuff and physical stuff, you know, making our bodies look good, you know, 
there's a big thing today with, 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 with these different serves, she used to make herself good, and I think it's great. If somebody wants to improve their confidence, it's fantastic. Mm. But like, let's start doing it from an internal side. Let's start. Let's start feeling good in here. And it takes work. It takes a lot of work. And the reason it does take a lot of work is because we're conditioned to feel like shit. We're conditioned yeah. to feel like we're no good, that we're worthless. And it's all down to our, 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 our environment growing up, what we grew up in around, our interactions with our parents, our attachments to our parents and everybody around us, how we got on in school, how it was in the street, you know? If somebody really close to you died when you were young, you know? all these different things play a massive part in how we feel about ourselves. Mm. And it's about understanding all that stuff first and, and the effect it has on us. And there's some fantastic books out there today that help us to understand that side of ourselves. Bessel van der Kolk's The Body Keeps the Score. It's a great book to understand how we're conditioned and how our body retains emotions from experiences that can be negative, trauma, abuse, neglect, and our body keeps that. Mm. And we live our lives after that conditioning. So we have the voice in the head that you're no good, you're worthless, you're, you're bad, you're stupid, you're thick, you're ugly, nobody wants you. We have that voice, every yeah. one of us have it. It depends, it depends on how we were conditioned and how we grew up. And that's the key. Understand this stuff, learn about it, and learn that these conditions and how you were molded is not who you are. You're nothing that, you're nothing but pure love. Neither is Tony there sitting in the chair, neither am I. <laughs> but our conditioning stops us from becoming that. It stops yeah. us from becoming <clears throat> pure love and becoming everything that we should have been. And recovery is about healing from these belief systems, the conditioning of, of our environments growing up, our beliefs, our cultures. It's about leaving that and the journey of recovery takes time. But you have to understand this stuff to be able to leave it happen in your life. And that's what's very important. And that's what doesn't happen for a lot of people in recovery. We do all these different programs, which are absolutely fantastic, and I wouldn't be here today without them. But there's also another side of it, Tommy, that we have to d d understand as well. We have to understand how to heal from within. Mm. Yeah. And that's the key here. The key to this trauma that's in here is understanding how to release and how to love and how to leave it out. But you have to understand how it works. And that's what we don't, there's not enough education around that. Yeah, yeah definitely. You know, and, and there's no, there's no end to getting well, as as well as there's no end to getting sick as well, unstable mentally. Like that can get worse and worse and worse and worse until you lose hope. Yeah. But there's no end to getting well and well and well. It just keeps going. Mm. You know, I learned that because I got comfortable there for a while in my own recovery. I didn't feel as bad as I did before. And I got comfortable because I never felt this well. You know? Mm -hmm. But then things started, to, my life started saying, do you know what? There's more growth. There's more growth in us. There's no end to the wellness. And do you know what that wealth, that, that growth is, do you know what it boils down to at the end of the day? What is it? Love, Tommy. love and you know who shows me unconditional love on a daily basis and I've never experienced it anything and it's not my wife it's a fucking dog <laughs> I have a dog at home there by and the thing just jumps up into my arms every day I go home and licks the face off me and when she sees me she gets so excited that dog is after teaching more thing, me more things in life than any human being possibly could ever I swear to you, I love my family, I love you, Tony, my kids at home, my wife. 
but we're hurt. We're like hurt animals. We're afraid to show ourselves. We're afraid to show the true person beneath all that of us. Mm. Because we're afraid we're going to be judged. You know? But our true sense of love, it, it, our true sense of being is love. Nothing else. And all I have to do is go home by and open the fucking door and I have it right in front of me every time. And the minute I see that dog, boy, my whole, no matter how bad my day is after being, you know? Mm. My wife, when I go home, she has a tough day with work and then the kids. So she's tired. She's not going to meet me at the door and jump up into my fucking arms and stand looking <laughs> the face at me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I understand that. <laughs> but I go out to her then and I hug her and I tell her I love her. Yeah. But that band is always going to be there because mm. she's my soulmate, Tommy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But this dog is here to teach me something about life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're special, boy. Right? Mm. Animals have a great way of showing us how to be. You know? Mm. Sorry, I went off on a tangent there, boys. <laughs> that was powerful to me. Mm. Do you know? Um, on really listening to a drive. You know, can you I, relate in any way, Tom? I can relate, but you know, I can get kind of awkward in it, if you get me. You know? I, I do, I, I do. do you know, not awkward, maybe I'm saying it wrong. I'm not great with words. And, and that's fine. And but, that's fine. But I do get it, but I just get, you know, when it comes to feelings and like we spoke there yeah. about the other ago, that's I, how just, I, I just think it's just unreal think that, stuff, that you're at that level. and I just think it's in us all. It, it, yeah, of course it's I in us all. I think it's in us all. Like, and not everybody, like, listen, this is my fucking reaction to it. This is, uh, yeah. not everybody is going to look at what I have to say. Yeah. Like, a lot yeah. of people are going to be caught up in a lot of negativity in their life. And they're not going to enjoy. 100%. They're not going to like what I have to talk about here. Yeah. They're going to yeah. say, look at the fucking idiot. Look at that, you man. Mm. You know, yeah, but there's like, a lot of people. Listen, listen, that's the reality of it. Mm. But for the people that can listen to this and can yeah. relate to this, yeah, and yeah. I know there's a lot of people out there can relate to this, you know, because mm. I used to think everybody was bad before. I thought, because my experiences with human beings growing up was horrific. Mm. And I thought people were fucking bad and horrible and stay away from them, they're just there to hurt you. Yeah. But I came across some magnificent fucking human beings, Tommy, in my lifetime. You're not in recovery. Yeah, yeah. People who caught my hand walking through the darkest of fucking tunnels, the darkest roads, and they didn't leave go, and yeah. they didn't turn around and run when I was facing some fucking bad demons. Mm. They stood by me, and they fucking put their hands around me, and they cried with me. You know? Yeah, I do. I and that's, 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 that's the healing I have to yeah. It's not... It's not just because of me and recovery. It's yeah. because of those people and my recovery. Yeah. And how they helped me. But you need to want the help as well, don't you? Tommy, That's a big thing. I though. was in so much pain. It was okay? the only thing left. I actually didn't know how I was going to get well. Yeah. I yeah, didn't I know. To that. I didn't know how I was going to feel different to the way I felt because I, I was... I. I was at my wit's end. I yeah. was at the end. Yeah. I didn't want to keep going mm -hmm. because I felt, I felt I I was had this so much negative energy within me that I was either going to pass it on to my children and they were going to fucking end up like me. Mm. You know, I can't sleep with the head down. I felt I felt I was no good. I, I wasn't. I, I felt like I needed to be taken over the environment, the home. Yeah. Because I, I, I was in such a really, really, really bad place. Yeah. And you know, I, as you said there, sorry, you know, but, uh, you know, the head down and all that stuff. I, I, I remember in early days in recovery, right, and uh, I was coming back from a meeting one night and I goes to someone, how long is that there? You no, know, because I was looking up. I wasn't looking down, I was looking up. They said, Tommy, that's there since it was built. Mm. And the thing is built 100 years, probably. So I never saw it, because I was always looking down. I'm going to tell you, 
about in one night you were in active addiction and you were walking up to Fairfield with two other fellas mm. and I was walking down past you with my son Jay I was bringing him out on his bike he was only learning to drive the bike at the time and you were so bad now at this stage Tommy you were fucking barely recognisable mm. by me and I seen you and you seen me and the shame in your face when you yeah. passed me you didn't even say hello yeah. none of us did I walked past you and I cried mm. and yeah my son turned around and he says dad that was Thomas there and he says I know and he could see me crying and he said what's wrong I said nothing but I said nothing he said it's Thomas sorry I said it's fine it's fine but the reason I cried is because I knew I couldn't do anything for you at yeah. that time yeah and not that I couldn't not do it. I, I also knew that it might be the last time I even see her. Mm. I really never knew, Tommy, when the last time I'd see you was going to be. And it was the same with John Paul. Yeah. <clears throat> right? And, and we had situations in our life at the moment where people aren't doing well, okay? And we can put a condition on how well they are in their recovery. Mm. I've learned from from your addiction and, and John Paul's addiction to stay completely neutral when one of you are caught up when you're you're caught up in addiction yeah because I know there's nothing I can do because if you're on the chase and you're on the prowl for drink or drugs or whatever it may be there's nothing else in your mind than that no. and there's nothing I'm going to do going to change it so if I put a condition on the help I'm giving you, okay, and you must get well, and if you don't get well because of that condition I'm putting on it, I'll get angry with you and I'll tell you fuck off. I'm no good to you. Mm -hmm. I'm no good to you. But yeah. if you ring me and ask, you ask for help. If you ring me and you want to talk, I'm there for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not going to chase you. Mm. I learned chasing somebody is not good. I learned that myself. I learned that myself, draw, but um yeah, it takes a lot out of you too, draw. It does, me? Tommy. It, it takes does a lot out especially you. when somebody that when somebody it's close, and, yeah. and you love them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you you said that now about the uh, park and and you says you didn't know when you were going to see me. I I remember getting a phone call off you and I said it in before, like uh you saying uh I mean, I'm after accepting that I'm going to get a phone call that you're dead, like, you know? And uh, I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm in the depths of it, like, and I'm like, you're oh, just fucking, fucking, do you know what I mean? And, and uh, but no, today, looking back on it, I, I understand. Back then, I didn't, do you know? Um, and, uh, like, I sent you a video the other night. Someone sent me a video. From yeah. six years ago, <laughs> and I sent it to people. I sent it to a lot of my friends, and they all text me back saying, "Who's he? Who are they? Sham, he's in some goof. Who is he?" None of them knew. We put who a picture it was. of that video twenty up as well when no, we put no, this podcast. Up. No one knew. It was it was me of Tommy. He, of that picture that he has um, I looked at it and just to give people a feel of of maybe would you be would you be would you be open to maybe playing a clip of the video Tommy just to show people yeah, yeah, what it's no like about it, no about it. it was it was actually Tommy will send you the clip there Um, it was actually about I'd say two to three months before I got clean you know um even even looking at it, I actually thanked the person. The the person that gave it to me was kind of like, are you sure you want this? And yeah. I, I, I don't know what way you're going to get over it. And I, once I heard it was when I was in the dictionary, I said, yeah, send it on straight away. And when he did, I said, thanks. Mm. You know, like, it just goes to show where I was and where I am today. You know, I was like, whoa. I never in my life thought I was that bad, you know. Um, 
and that miss my head's about to wizard uh, the the mic. Yeah, and you actually have hair up. Uh, Your hair is like a mop head hair. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, whoa. I watched well, I that was, video about twenty times. When I was looking at the video I was I was fascinated with your with with the way your body was trying to protect itself from falling back. Mm. Like, even though you were fucking gone to the gods, your body was still trying to protect you mm-hmm. from falling, not knowing what it was falling behind, even though it was a bed. Yeah. Like that. Like people will watch that video and they'll say, what the f- holy mm. fuck, like, because they won't understand it. No. But for no. some, for us, where we come from, it's it's not something that we'd look at in that way. We just look at it as an just addiction. Yeah, we you know we'd look at yeah. it as just addiction. Like if I if I was using and I saw someone in that situation, I'd be jealous. Do you know? Yeah, I'd be jealous. Yeah, Do you know, uh, it's you'd be like, where did he get that stuff? Like, I can completely relate to it. You know. Where did he get that? Mm. I want some of that. Yeah. You know, that's, 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 that's it, the madness of it. That is the madness of life. Yeah. Where if yeah. it was somebody yeah. else that wasn't used to that and, life. And they'd be, they'd they'd be, be saying that's disgusting. What's that like? Yeah. How could, but it's, it, and it's not, it's, it's not, it's not a case that somebody's being completely naive or anything like that. It's just, it's just, they wouldn't be used to it, huh? Mm. You know, yeah. it's, it's there. It, some people are brought up, and that which is great, where they're brought up in environments where, where they're loving and caring, and and they get all their, the, the emotional needs that they require to become a healthy adult. Yeah. Do you know, somebody that's tuned into being able to process emotions when they come up from, and 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 it's very healthy. You know, but in our circumstances, it wasn't like that. Yeah, like we 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 everything up, was pushed down and. It, it was pushed down, but we also disconnected. Yeah. We were disconnected because we didn't know how to process. So, for example, if I was out in the street and I was called Big Head Knob, or I got a few clatters off a bigger fella, I dare not went home because I get kicked the fucking dead. So I had to learn to fight. Mm-hmm. But you see that stuff that was happening to me, that wasn't just a physical... It was on emotional side as well. I was being affected, and it was taking something to me from me. Because the more beatings I got, the more emotional disconnect was happening for me. You know, because I was starting to become something I wasn't. I was a fucking, I was a shy kid. I wasn't bad. Mm. I was very sensitive. Do you know? You used to be out the front fixing, fixing bikes. I was a loner, Tommy. Yeah. I didn't know how to connect with people. doing worse to the bikes. <laughs> but, but you know what, Tommy? Them bikes out the front of the yeah. house used to take me away from my head. He dismantled a brand new bike. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it, was, it, was, yeah. it was something that helped me to cope yeah. back then. Because yeah, I, I struggled with my head, Tommy, massively mm. as a child. Yeah. I didn't know how to cope. I really didn't know how to cope. I couldn't talk. I couldn't talk. I, I didn't know how to keep, keep my head up and talk to anybody. I was just, I just, I was destroyed, mm. you know? Yeah, I, I, I can be like, I'm, as I, as you say, I don't know, draw like me, I'm out there and I'm be chatting and I get on and, but, but I can be like that too then as well, draw, oh, shy and there's, there's that side of it as well, there as well, with me, draw, but like, I'm all, well, what's happening, how are you getting on, blah, 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 but there's a shy side as well and, mm. And 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 pe- people could think, oh, he's an ignorant cunt, but I'm not. I just get fucked up myself. Do you know what I mean? Like- Tell me one thing, Tommy. <clears throat> Tell me this, right? And if anybody's ever kind of listened to this pod or a different podcast before, and they've heard my story. They know my rock bottom mm. and how it happened. Mm-hmm. What was your rock bottom? Like, I I don't think you've ever told me what your rock bottom was. Like why did why you stop? You because I always, I always wondered. Rock bottom, and if that video goes up, that's my rock bottom. That's very close to my rock bottom there. Um, but like, 
what was what was what happened what really happened that there was such a sense of awareness that you had you just had to you knew that you had to change your life because if you were at the end of it like I, it just took its toll on me but i couldn't what was the moment what was the moment in your life that like, you said i i can't say exactly for right? me for me it was lying down in a cell sitting sitting on my knees in the floor trying to pick up pieces of white paint off this off the floor thinking mm. that there were cracks of cocaine yeah and jumping onto the bed and crying for the night that was the like i didn't know that that was my rock bottom there and then I didn't really know it until years later when mm. I was able to consciously look back in my life yeah, and yeah. see that moment and R- saying, right. that was that was an awakening, that was mm. an ex- a spiritual experience for me and that started me on my journey to where mm. I am today because it was so powerful emotionally. It would so had so much emotional strength that night mm-hmm. that ne- never happened to me before. Yeah. I'd often pray to God, no one asked God for mm-hmm. to stop me. But yeah. Two minutes later, I'd be back in the bag or back in the bottle. Yeah. Like, did I, you have I, any experience I, like I, that? I mine like that, but I didn't get clean. I didn't stop that day. Do you know? Yeah. I, it didn't work like that for me. I didn't stop that day. But, so, but can you remember yes, something? Yes, yes, yes. What it was for me, uh, I was, uh, I was homeless. I was homeless. It was Christmas. Um, I was homeless. I was. Uh, down the album or the or, by the Orwoman's jail. The Good Shepherds, a lot of people in the north side would know the Good Shepherds because they were probably threatened that they'll be sent to the yeah. Good Shepherds if they're <laughs> bold. So it was the Good Shepherds. Just as you went to the Good Shepherds, there was like a gate man's house, a house. On the left hand side. On the left hand side. So I was in there, I was living there for a couple of weeks, nothing in there, nothing only sleeping like, see, excuse me, sleeping blankets. Me and a friend of mine, um, we were in there around, and it was Christmas. I never forget it. Um, so, like at Christmas, even when I was bed, I I always had me clothes and me me new clothes and me new runners on Christmas Day, you know. And um, I was in there for Christmas Day, and it was the most loneliest feeling. And I, I never forget it. I see usually every Christmas I go to your house for my dinner, draw, and and it was the one year that I I did what I couldn't go to your house. Do you remember house. that day? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember me calling up to the house yeah. and catching your house yeah. with, with a few fellas? Yeah, 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 but, yeah. That but, was my rock yeah. bottom day walking away from that house, draw. Yeah. The pain that was inside my stomach that day. Or oh, walking away. I remember that day well. Mm. And my understanding was that like, I walked into the house, there was about four or five of you there. This mm. is Christmas Day, Tom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your small fellow was down the house with me, mm. with his mum. Yeah. And I think I had to go up to get something. Mm, that's right. I was yeah. looking for you to come down. I was ringing your phone. You were supposed to be there too. Mm. And you wouldn't answer. So I came up around the house, I caught you in the house, and I was actually disgusted. That it was Christmas Day and you were inside in the house doing your thing. Mm. I got very fucking angry that day, with you? Mm. And I rarely kind of, at this stage, I was in recovery, I rarely got fucking angry with you because I understood addiction a little bit more. Yeah. But you went, you went, My, I was fucking heartbroken that mm. day. That was a sad day for me, you know. That was the day by that broke me. That day by back down to the thing, you know, I back down to the. You couldn't eat a squat, a squat. No, you wouldn't put a dog in there. Um, back down there, by and I never, you know, I saw the boys that was with me went away, by and I cried myself to sleep that night. In, in that there. sounds like it. Do you know, cried that... myself to sleep, by and and uh, I, I said, I have to, I have to do something. I have to do something. Do you know, I was fucked. Um, then, then the video that I mean, that will be shown. Um, I was put up in the hostel. I was in the hostel where we were. A lot of us were all using in there, you know, took advantage of the house and fucking smoking heroin. And and, and you see you see it in the video, you know, and um, a couple of about, I'd say it could have been two months after it, maybe less, 
I ended up in France's farm. Yeah. I went to France's farm in May, I think. The staff to May. Um, France's farm treatment centre. Yeah, yeah, up there. But, um, yeah. That was when your journey started from yeah. there. And even your journey in there was a bit mad, like. My, my journey there was rocky, you know. I was up there, I was up there for five, five weeks, do you know. Um, how I'm clean today is a blessing. Yeah, you, I, I, you, I, I, yeah. I, you like, yeah. it was you. Um, do you know, I remember I went up know, there. I, I, I remember coming up to see you. And 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 uh, uh, we were only back, mm. and I came up to see you. I think we were only asked to get another fucking plane, and we came to see you. That's right, yeah, yeah. We were yeah. away out and calling the yeah. kids, and I came up to see you, and um, you looked fresh and healthy. But I knew there was something else going on as well. Mm. Do you know? But well, what well, actually, actually, to that day, the yeah. day you came, there was nothing going yeah. on. I was full on. I was doing my thing. It was actually after that day everything mm. went pear shaped. But when I when I say I knew there was something else going on as well, I kind of seen kind of there was a few mad heads there as well. Oh yeah, sure. Do you know? Well, and I know treatments that you get them. <laughs> I know, like oh. I was saying, fucking hell, he's now a pair, like because I know, like <clears> get you around. Yeah, as well. <laughs> and I know we were on a few heads there, like yeah. I said, God, if they ever got away. I think you were uh, there on the Sunday. I was home on the Monday yeah. or the Tuesday, was it? Yeah, I tell you what happened now. This is what happened for me. Um, I left you, went home. I was home a few days. I was at work one day. Someone phoned me and they says, Timmy, Tommy's in treatment. He's supposed to be in treatment. I says, yeah. He says, Timmy, I just seen him there by up by his own gaff. Mm. I said, what? He said, yeah. So I jumped into the car and yeah. And I drove up the road and I, I seen you just walking out your drive. Mm. Right? Go in and get a bag, you says. Come uh, on. I, I didn't know what was after happening at this mm. stage because I didn't even know you were using at this stage. Mm. And I knew straight away then that, like, because you were on your own, I think mm. I think your partner was away at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I knew if I'd left, walked away that day, even if you were out of your brains mm. and, and I walked away and left you there things would have been different oh 100% like like I was only off methadone a week I, my my bones were aching Um, I was only after smoking heroin the day before you know so I came out and smoked heroin and then went to your house mm. uh, and that's when I stopped that was it that was I it. remember ringing my boys I, I remember inside in your house and Nicole had to change the bed sheets every day. Mm. I was climbing the walls. Mm. I'd be up the top, I was down the end. I was, oh, it was a rough two weeks. And then Timmy decides to bring me on a 26 kilometre walk. Yeah. Oh my God. You got there though? I done it, yeah. It was like got carrying two yeah. cavity blocks on yeah. my feet. Oh, Why had you woke me for, for? Yeah, you brought me on to work. Yeah. But right. because I <laughs> it wasn't because I knew you were going to be able to work physically, I knew <laughs> I had to keep a fucking eye on you. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and you rang a friend of ours to yeah. bring me to a meeting, and I never forget it, but you know, like, like for meetings for me, I, I, I've been at meetings before uh, treatment and that, but I was only going in there to get people off my back. Or but you know what, Dr. Tommy? Going out to the cold and get, have a stone and get a cup of tea and have a biscuit. That was the only reason. Do you know what, though? I could see something different about you this time around, mm. but I could see you were I, broken. I, to me, I was broke, but... I could I see it, but your head was down. You weren't choppy. I remember... You were, like, you you didn't... Ha you couldn't even say too many words, no, like... No, no, no. I had no confidence. My confidence was on the floor. I never forget it. I was down Blackpool. Me and my brother, John Paul. And, uh, do you know, my sports director, the big windows... I looked in the window and I saw myself in the window and I goes, fucking hell. So I, I, I wouldn't have seen the mirror yeah. that time. I wouldn't even wash myself because I was that bad, you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, I looked in the mirror and I goes, oh, God, look, out the window. I goes, I'm following, fuck looking. He goes, Thomas, I didn't want to say it to you, but you're taken. I 
that was like the penny dropped in I as well. I was like, something has to give here. So I thought it was always in my head, yeah. I have to. I knew I was getting worse and getting worse. And, you know, I said it before, like, um, at the end, I, I wanted to die, like, you know, I wanted, I put needles in my hands just to go over and die, because a lot of people were dying at the time, and I was saying, that's what I do now, because I, I, I hadn't, the courage to take my own life, so I said I'd do it the easy way, stick a needle in my hand and go over, and I'm gone. But it didn't happen, you know, it didn't happen. Um, <clears throat> and I'd done it again, you know, I'd done it twice in the one day. That was that was just to end it all. One fella done it, then another fella done it, and I was saying, I have to go now. First time ever doing it, doing it twice. I says, it has to happen. But it didn't. You know? And thank God it didn't. You know? And, and I, today I always say, you know, I wasn't meant to die. I wasn't meant to die. I, I'm here for a reason. And, and, and the reason I think I'm here is to pass a message to the next sufferer yeah. and addict. And I, I'm a big believer of that. Like, I, know, I, I really am. Like, you know? I... It's, it, I don't know. Tell people how, 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 how different your life has changed from, from that moment, from that day that you came down to my house, right? Because you were only out of treatment. Yeah. And that was the start of your recovery process yeah. in the outside. How, so, what, have, what is the difference? What can you get in life if you put your head down and you want a different life. You want to be able to be happy, love yourself. What do you have to do to be, get to the place where you are today? What did you do? Well, I tell you now, what I done, I went to the meeting the second night in your house. I went to your house on uh, Wednesday. The second night, I went to the meeting. It was a Thursday night meeting. It was called Laverna. I'll never forget it. Newcomers meeting it was. NA meeting and uh, I went into that meeting um, everyone I knew a lot of people in there I spoke and I got a lot of feedback and at the end of it they said uh, they were all saying keep coming back keep coming back and I said if I take out now that meeting I'm going to keep coming back and I did I came back the next night and I came back the next night and the next night and I was dragging myself there because I just had to I had to keep drunk so then I got hungry for it. I got hungry for recovery. I was feeling good. I was getting stronger. I was getting, oh, I like this. I was looking at other people, what they had. I want what they have, you know? And uh, I remember, I remember, I remember someone saying to me inside the meeting, you, you keep coming to these rooms and you get a life beyond your wildest dreams. And I was like, well, you know, this fella, life beyond... So what I thought that was, was fancy cars, you know, best of clothes, jewellery, you know, all I thought it was all flashy stuff. That's what I thought, no, the life beyond the world. But you know what it was? Going home and putting my head on the pillow by, and going to sleep without thinking about drugs. Yeah. You know, not, not going into bed and wondering where am I going to get the next fix? Who am I going to rob tomorrow if I can? Or who am I going to scam? Or how am I going to get it? You know? That, that's what it was for me, putting my head, you know, answering my phone without the phone falling out of my hand because I, I don't know who it was, who I owed money to or anything like that. So um, that's what I, I want, life beyond this wildest dreams to me. My brain slowing down, you know. Um, so, well and, yeah, yeah. And, and then, do you know what I mean? I kept going to meetings. Me and a good friend of mine, Alan, there are a lot of people who know him. Um, for 15 months solid, we went to meetings every night. On weekends, we could go to school. We had to. Mm. We had to. I had to. Like, and, and, and when I came around and when I got it and when I got a taste of it, I says, I'm not giving this up for no one. No one's going to stop my recovery. This means everything. I'm no good to no one with a drink or a drug in my system. Do you know? Um, I was two months clean, 
Like in in recovery, you celebrate a clean time, like a year, one year. I celebrated every. I celebrated thirty days, sixty days, nine. I went for meals for all them, ninety days, <laughs> nine months or six months, nine months, twelve months. I, people were sick to death I'd going out for food with me because <laughs> I celebrated every one of them because it was so hard to get yeah. you know? and um, so I, I, I've drawn, I was getting cleaned my tags they were a big thing to me they were giving me motivation you know? I got my, my just for today I want my turkey days and all the colours and all that. I wanted them all. I was looking at them on the table and I get one tonight and I look up at the table and I say, I'm getting that one next. You know what I mean? And that drove me on. Yeah. Do you know? Um, and even, even like, and this is going out to people that are in recovery and are, are trying to get to recovery. Meetings are key, like, mm. they're key, do you know? And what do and meetings give somebody? What 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 do they get from meetings, Tommy? You get hope. You get hope, and you know you you relate to people. Cause for me, right, I went into the meeting, and I, I before I went into the meeting, I thought I was the only one in the world that had what was going on in my head, and um, and going into the meeting and listening to other people, and relating to them. I often went into a meeting saying, someone's after telling this fella now my story and he's up here telling me my stuff. Do you know? Mm. That's, that's... Because I thought it was only me that yeah. went through all this. And I'm like, nah, someone definitely told him. Huh? Mm. He's on about me here, like... Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. And I'm looking around the room, who could have told him now? <laughs> no, but... And then the next night, I, I was hearing it again. I, I, I'd always take something out of a meeting, you know? Like, I could relate to him or relate to her. I'd be like, whoa. I thought I was the only person that done that. Mm-hmm. Whoa. And then Magic, I, isn't it? Yeah, it's mad. And then I knew I was in the right place, you know? If I went to, I go into a meeting and I share, you know? But if I came out to someone and tried to talk to them, that did not want no recovery, that's a mad sign him in. But, you know, in, in recovery, people understand you. People mm. outside are, are not in recovery. They won't understand you, you know. Um, so, yeah, by being into them, for, for, I went to conventions. I used to look forward, you know. No, I, I always said that nothing will get in my way of my recovery. And uh, I started getting tattoos of, of, of recovery on my arm, you know. What about work and financially then? So I, I started work. I started to work two months in my recovery. You know? Some people say, don't, don't jump into work, don't jump into relationships. You know, they say that. But, but I, I have a busy mind, so I need structure and I needed work. You know? And, and, and the, the job at the time, you know, it wasn't big money I was going into. It was handy money. It was all right. It got me by. It wasn't crazy, you know. Um, I worked for it and I loved it, and it was and it was a job from half seven in the morning to five o'clock in the evening. So I thought I took up a lot of my day, so work, home, dinner, meeting. I done that for fifteen months. I did work, home, meeting. I had to do it. That was my routine. Do you know? That was my routine. I was afraid to change my routine in any way, in case I went off track. Do you know? Um, you know, it's, it, I, the way I explain it, it's not easy. Life is still there. You, know? you still have your problems yeah. and your this and that. But going into recovery, going into rooms, you could listen to someone, you could hear on some, you could have a problem, and you could hear on someone having the same problem two days ago, and you say, he done this now when he had that problem. I'll try it and see how I get on with it. You know? <laughs> and, and I used to do a lot of that. Do you know, what I hear, I'd work what I hear in the rooms. Mm. Do you know, it, was, it, was, it saved my life, like, saved yeah. my life. I, it's, it's, it, and that's because what you're, what you're going through, somebody else has gone through it as well, and, yeah. and they've tested it and it's mm. worked for them. So what you're doing is, instead of going out there trying to f- find yep. something that works, 
somebody's actually in here telling you what works and you'll get before you can make any mistakes you're trying what yeah. they've they've um, spoke about what has happened in their lives and what's worked for them in their lives mm. and that's the key that is the key to it but but what it all boils down to is uh, for, for me is the meetings the meetings are the key oh yeah the meetings are the key and the steps the programme that and comes get, with get these, a sponsor the, get a sponsor when programs, you're ready do you know yeah the um, programmes that come with with, 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 with with these different groups you know A N A G A C A C A you've O A there's so many there's something there for every addiction you know and, and there's a programme attached to everything and there's also people within these different fellowships that will help any person if you're somebody that has a drink problem or drug problem that's all you need that's all is the only thing that's required to walk into a meeting is the, the desire to stop using that's it mm. and just want help you know yeah. and, and um, uh, like I remember as well drawing early recovery people ringing me from the rooms and they like drawn you're not used to it like you're like oh what does this fellow want no yeah you know what I mean what, what do he want me to know for then you answer it and all he wants to know how you're getting on you're like whoa <laughs> there's a catch here like <laughs> he definitely wants something yeah. and then he say oh, have a good day I'm just checking up now you're like what the fuck alright boy go on boy yeah. you know and you're like it's alien to you yeah because like when you come in off addiction like the only person that's ringing your phone is probably your mother or someone that's looking for money you know yeah. or a family member that's how it is no drug dealer you owe me this or you owe me <laughs> that and I'm like hang up him I mean it, like what we both have the story both us have is, is, is um, they're powerful in, mm. in relation to to how we can relate to each other and how we can relate to everybody else at home. Yeah. You know? So what I would like to do, we're going at it now nearly two hours, what I would like to do is maybe come back here and have another chat with you. Yeah, 100%. And, and just talk about recovery for the two of us mm. and maybe how it worked for both of us then in prison and, and like yeah. while I was in recovery. What was going on for you in the prison while I was in recovery and you were fucking active you know, and, and how things transpired from there. See, that's the language, you no know, barrier where I get caught with it as well. Mm. That's, that's okay. I'm not used to saying that. I don't, buy, the words don't and... beat myself up anymore, Tommy. Mm. Yeah. Do you know, it is what it is. So we'll come back, Tommy, and we'll we'll do this again yeah. because I, I want to, I want to, there's loads more stuff that we, we can chat about and, and, um, and help other people who are on their journey. Yeah. A lot of stuff around, a um, lot of the programme for me is a lot of the psychotherapy mm. stuff and other stuff that I've done as well yeah. to help me along my way and maybe I'll talk about how, how we work as human beings yeah. and how we can break down the whole process of the head and the emotion stuff and we'll have a good conversation about that and what works for you and what works for me so we'll do that it'll be better to this Tommy so yeah. um, so listen thank you very much for listening to us and um We'll definitely come back to you with a part two of Timmy and Tommy's conversation around all things growing up, recovery, addiction, prison, and everything that goes with that. So for now, it's Timmy and Tommy, the Long Way Back podcast. And if you want to listen to this, you can find you're probably you're listening to it already <laughs> but if, if there's anybody else that you think might benefit from listening to us you can share it on all social media platforms or just give them a link from YouTube yeah. Spotify or any of the other uh, podcasting platforms so for now listen thank you very much for listening and um, it's long from me and Tommy until part two God bless <laughs>